The Renaissance can be characterized by a resurgence of classical ideals and the reconceptualization of humanity's grand historical narrative. With these themes reflected in the art of the period, this presentation will illustrate some key developments of Renaissance art through the exploration of the most emblematic works of Donatello, Masaccio, Lippi, Mantegna, Leonardo, and Raphael. Donatello was a leading sculptor in the early ages of the Renaissance. With his impeccable rendering skills combined with an amalgamation of contrasting techniques and styles, Donatello not only revolutionized a unique way of sculpting, but also became an inspiration and influence to many artists following him. His representation of David marks a paramount moment in the Renaissance, where he broke through the current idealized boundaries of sculpting, revolutionizing life-size sculpture. Specificities in this work allowed him to embrace his confidence, honesty, and skills as an artist. The curves and boyish softness of David subverted the commonly idealized male figures from ancient times, and shed light on Donatello's ability to depict a better understood, honest representation. Donatello exhibits his proficiency again in his choice to over-exaggerate Goliath's helmet, thus demonstrating his skills in bronze work specifically. Finally, we see Donatello's confidence in many choices in this work, distinctively his choice to represent David as Goliath's killer instead of him as king. His sculpture, because of this choice, evidently stood out from other representation of David, and thus was appreciated for its meticulous details. Donatello's work in the Renaissance was a benchmark for artists who followed him. Through Donatello's David, we can see how his confidence and revolutionary artistic abilities allowed him to have a highly successful career, qualifying him as arguably the best sculptor of the early Renaissance. Masaccio was an influential Renaissance painter who lived from 1401 to 1428, and is said to have helped the development of the Renaissance by employing and perfecting the revolutionary techniques that are characteristic of this period. This is evident in one of his most famous paintings, the Tribute Money. In this painting, we can see that Masaccio has mastered linear perspective, as is evident in his handling of the architecture to the right of the scene, with the lines converging to a single vanishing point. He's also mastered atmospheric perspective, appropriately making the foreground darker and more saturated, while the background is softer with bluish tones. Masaccio's figures are also notable, as is his use of light to accentuate them. For example, he accurately foreshortens the feet so that the figures appear to be standing flat, as opposed to standing on tiptoe, as previous artists inaccurately depicted. The tax collector assumes a contrapposto stance with his weight on one leg, as would be done in real life. Additionally, the use of a single light source serves to define the anatomy of the figures as opposed to the uniform wash of light that previous artists had employed. These details all result in a painting that Vasari describes as much livelier and vivacious than the art that precedes him, and resulted in a painting so influential that many artists visited the chapel to study it, including Michelangelo himself. While we will never know what Masaccio could have accomplished had he not had such a short lifespan, his influence is still indisputably crucial to the creation of the works that follow him. Fra Filippo Lippi was a painter from Florence recognized for the beauty, grace, and compositions of his paintings and his betrayal of emotion. His work was revolutionary in its ability to dissolve the barrier between the space of the viewer and that of the painted image. Lippi's 1445 painting of the Madonna and Child with Two Angels not only invites the viewer into the painting by means of the angel who is looking out and making eye contact with the viewer, Lippi has also rendered the figures outside of the frame. With reference to the beauty and grace of his work, Lippi alludes to the ideals of Renaissance humanism, thus ensuring a realistic depiction of individualized features and appropriate massing of the figures. Consider the way the angels are supporting the weight of the child. Furthermore, the rejection of explicit symbols of divinity contributes to this theme, as seen in the faint halos of both Madonna and the child. It must also be noted that Madonna is illustrated here as the image of ideal beauty, with beauty comparable to that of the sea behind her. As we move to look at the background, the influence of Northern Renaissance art becomes evident, given how convincing the landscape has been rendered by means of atmospheric perspective and the realistic depiction of water. The naturalism in Lippi's paintings makes him appear effortless, and with such beauty and grace his divine gift is undeniable. Andrea Mantegna was born in Padua near Venice in 1431. The city of Padua claimed to have an ancient past dating back to approximately the 11th or 10th centuries BCE, which had a large impact on the artists in the city, who like many during the Renaissance were concerned with reaching and even surpassing the skill of artists from antiquity. The San Zeno altarpiece is a triptych painted by Mantegna between 1456 and 1459. The main altarpiece contains imagery that refers to classical antiquity, such as the frieze with the angels located behind the Madonna's throne that wraps around the internal structure, and the columns that make up the frame, which creates the illusion that the altarpiece is a physical space that recedes from this frame. 
By blending imagery from antiquity with Christian iconography, this work greatly shows Mantegna's creativity and experimentation. The central predea of the altarpiece is called the Crucifixion, and shows one of Mantegna's most notable techniques, the worm's eye view. Mantegna lowered the horizon of his paintings, which made the angle of his vanishing point more dramatic, and gave a greater sense of movement, urgency, and theatricality. Mantegna's new technique of linear perspective and his fascination with classical antiquity was creative and innovative, and influenced many artists and sculptors in the later Renaissance. Leonardo da Vinci's unfinished Adoration of the Magi from 1481 is demonstrative of the artist's treatment of painting as an intellectual and interdisciplinary study. Leonardo's process, as evidenced by this work, points to the changing status of the artist and view of an artist as an intellectual near the end of the 15th century. We see the influence here of the study of mathematics and architecture in the rendering of architectural space, as well as with the establishment of a stable center in the image with the pyramidal positioning of the Virgin Mary and the three magi. There's also a more complex rendering of figures and of physicality in their emotional expressions. Leonardo uses the shading technique of sfumato, which was born from the study of nature and visual perception, and aimed at representing figures more truly to how they would be perceived in reality. As we move to look at the composition as a whole, we can see all figures in calculated interaction with one another and the surrounding space. The figures surrounding the Virgin Mary and Christ Child are crouched and rounded and appear to elevate the central figures, thus ridding Leonardo of any need to use traditional symbols of divinity and allow him to achieve the same end through the dynamic and ultimately more realistic interplay between figures. As such, we see that by this point in the Renaissance, the artist is working towards and beginning to be seen as an inspired mind, an increasingly prominent and respected figure in a society so enamored with the pursuit of knowledge. The School of Athens is a fresco painted in the Vatican Palace by Raphael. In this one work, he represents the most salient ideals of the High Renaissance and showcases his mastery of the technical advancements of the earlier Renaissance. This scene depicts the scholarship of ancient Greece in action, highlighting the spirit of inquiry and the value of human accomplishment characteristic of Athens at the time. On the left we find Socrates, often considered the first true philosopher of the Western world. In the central focal point, Plato is depicted pointing to the heavens as he explains that knowledge comes from the perfect realm of the forms. His student, Aristotle, gestures to the world at large, claiming that we can know of the secrets of our universe through careful and thorough observation. Other famously influential thinkers include Euclid, Epicurus, and Pythagoras. In the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church would have viewed many, if not most, of the characters in this scene as heretics for asking questions which may have been at odds with the teachings of Catholicism. The fact that this image was painted in the private library of Pope Julius II symbolizes one of the key features of the Renaissance worldview at the time, an eagerness to reconcile the teachings of philosophy, science, and art with those of the Christian religion, to reconcile the world of spirit and the world of human thought. As mentioned above, we can also find all the technical advancements of the earlier Renaissance perfected in this image. A clear master of realism, Raphael's deft use of chiaroscuro, color, perspective, composition, proportion, and his expert knowledge of the human face and form all come together in an impressive and dramatic tribute to the pursuit of expertise itself. <laughs>